Hi, I'm Joaquin van Schoren. Welcome to the course on machine learning. This video is a short introduction into how you should use the course and how you can do the labs and the assignments. Right? Um, so this is the main website uh, of the course. You will see there's a number of lectures. There are labs. These labs, you can just view them or you can also download the solutions. And there is a series of background materials for those who have less experience programming in Python and doing machine learning in Python. Right? So if you're new to Python, going to at least the first three of these is a good way to start uh, to get up to speed with the coding. Now, otherwise, you will see that the lectures um, can be viewed in different ways. Uh, that's because I want you to really know how to test things in practice and how to build things in practice. So what I do, instead of just writing normal PowerPoint slides, um, I write Jupyter Notebooks and I try to avoid images and try to code, make examples in code um, that show you how machine learning algorithms work and show you some more insights. Uh, and this also allows you then to repeat everything that I do. It allows you to experiment. It allows you to change parameters and to explore algorithms more easily on your own. Right? So I hope this way you will get a very good way of independently trying things. And if you have questions, to experiment yourself and get a better understanding. Right? Okay, so you'll see that every um, chapter here has a uh, a PDF. You can just look at the PDF, right? So if anything else, you just want to get to the material. So you can just load the PDFs and you can just read them, right? Besides that, you can also look at the materials in HTML. Same thing. It's typically more handy if you are on an iPad or a mobile device. So it's just for you to uh, have easy access to it. Then there is the notebooks. So the notebooks give you all the code that was used to generate the slides. Now these notebooks, uh, they're also hosted on GitHub. So if you, if, you, if you click here on GitHub, you will get here. So this is the repository of the course. So all the materials are open source. If you look at this, you will see that there are different folders. Here we have the notebooks. So here are the Jupyter notebooks that are used for all the course slides and the labs. The labs are here. So here you have all the notebooks for the labs. And then there's also, well, uh, sorry, uh, directories with the slides and the PDFs and so on. Uh, studies is, these are basically assignments from previous years. Um, these are maybe if you have time left, you can go through these to see how to solve these. These are just like case studies, which give you a bit more understanding, but they're completely optional. And the rest is just um, code for generating everything. If you want to read more, this course is pretty self-contained, um, so you should be able to get by with just the slides. Um, if you want to read more, uh, there's a list of books, and I split this up into practice-oriented materials, which are more about how you do machine learning in practice, and more theory-oriented books, which give you more understanding, more theoretical understanding of the books. Uh, the slides themselves are a mixture of both. Right, so if you want to get your hands dirty, right, so if you want to actually run the notebooks that are used for the slides, if you want to get started on the labs, it's probably best that you clone this repository. So here you can just download all the materials as a zip file, but I would generally recommend you to just clone the repo uh, because if any materials change, and things can change up to the scheduled presentation, uh, well, the scheduled week of that uh, lecture, uh, things can change. So it's nice if you just clone it, then afterwards you can just get pull the results, right? Just easier. Um, so if you want to clone, if you want to clone this, you can just open any um, command line and you just do. Well, I'll make a directory um, 
for your materials. I've already done that, of course, right? So I'm just going to go into that. Oops. Oh, already, okay. Um, and then you do git clone and then the repo, right? And if you do this, then this will download all the materials. I've already done that, so I now have a folder here, master, and in there I have all the materials. And then you can work on them, um, for instance, with JupyterLab, which I find the easiest way to do things. So if you type JupyterLab, this will open up Jupyter, and now you will see all the course materials, all the lab materials, and you can get started. All right, so if you want to look at the course slides, you can just open that notebook and you can actually rerun all the code, right? So if, for instance, I give these examples here, uh, the code that I used for generating these examples is here and you can basically reproduce everything. Right? So it also has these um, the code widgets so you can build little interactions if you want to. And if you want to play around with these materials, you can always do that, right? So, for instance, if you want to, for, well, I don't know, maybe you want to try the decision tree classifier here, then you can just do that. I'll just add decision tree classifier. We'll get into the details of how you do all this, but just to show you that you can very easily interact with the slides. I have to import that also. So from scikit-learn, so trees, import, right. Nope, of course not, there's no trees, tree. Okay. Uh, and now I can, oh, I need to edit here as well. Right, and now I can see this one as well. Right, so it's very easy to get in touch with the materials, to play around, to change um, anything really. Right, so if you want to see, okay, how does this board vacuum machine work with much more narrow curves, you could do that too. And you will see that the result is again will be very different, right, of course. Now it's completely overfitting, of course. Well, so you can really get your hands dirty and play around with everything in the in the course slides. And I hope you, this will give you a lot of capability and, and understanding, right? Okay, um, so that's the slides. You can, uh, for the labs, you can get started the same way. Um, so you can just open any lab and you can get started uh, with the lab and just start solving it, right? So whenever you give an exercise, you just uh, create a new um, cell, and you can start solving the assignments. Um, this assumes that you have a working Python installation. Uh, to set that up yourself, I would go to the prerequisites. This gives you step-by-step -step instructions on what to install. So I recommend to use Conda, but you can also use pip, depending on what you like. Um, I would use a virtual environment if you want to shield this from the rest of your system. Yeah, and then if you have that, then you can just do this, these labs in, in, in JupyterLab, okay? Now, if you want, uh, say for some reason, there's some problem with your setup or you, um, yeah, maybe your laptop is broken, you're, you're not on your original system, you can also load everything into Google Colab. So Google Colab is a nice initiative by Google, <coughs> which provides uh, hosted notebooks. Right. Um, so you can, um, you can just upload your labs or your notebooks, whatever, even the, even the course slides from your local disk and then you can start working on them. You can even just, um, because because everything is on GitHub, you can also just search for the labs here. Now, 
so just type ML dash course. This will give you this will send you to um, our repo, and then here you can yeah here you see all the labs, and you can already start working on them. Some labs have tutorials uh, which remind you of the main commands you need to use. So that should be pretty self-explanatory. If you have any questions, of course, you can put them on Canvas. And this will, okay, so this will show you the notebook. Um, one thing is that uh, this command here won't work. So the preamble is a little file which is present in your lab repo. Right, um, and this does some kind of a bunch of imports that you typically use, like typically like import pandas, import numpy, and so on. Um, to avoid having to type this over and over again, we have it in the first line of the lab, but that won't work in Colab, right? So you have to remove that. You can just remove this whole block. And then you have to um, import numpy, for instance, yourself, right? Um, okay. Now, um, there's one library that we often use and that's not automatically loaded by Colab and that's OpenML. So if you want to use that, then you have to pip install it. So you have to do dash pip install OpenML and I'll be quiet. And this will then uh, install OpenML. And you can do the same thing with any library that's not natively um, supported by uh, Colab. You can just um, exclamation point pip install it and then you're good to go. Right. So worst case scenario, uh, you don't have your own local setup. Uh, you can use Colab for doing all the labs and you can also do it for all the assignments. All right. It's actually nice for the assignments because um, Google Colab allows you um, a GPU runtime. I have to remember where that is. Uh, at some point, somewhere you can you can ask for a GPU. Yeah, runtime type. Yeah, so here you can ask. So uh, go to um, runtime. And then change runtime type, and then you can switch to GPU runtime. Uh, and this will reconnect uh, the kernel, and then you will have access to a GPU, right? So now you have you working in an environment with a GPU, which is not so useful for now, but when later on we'll go to deep learning, uh, it will be very useful to speed things up, right? Now remember, Colab um, is kind of limited in this respect, so you will get a GPU, but if you use it too much, uh, Colab can just say not, that you cannot use it anymore, right? So there's, so there's certain usage limits, uh, so be aware of that. You cannot always count on it being there. All right, um, that's most of it. Of course, uh, the videos, <laughs> you, probably, you probably know where to find them because that's where this video is hosted. So they're all hosted in our channel on YouTube and you can just play all videos there. If you have any questions, uh, you can just uh, post them in the comments. Uh, likewise, if you have any questions, you can also put them on um, Canvas. And if you have any remarks on the course slides, like typos and so on, uh, you are free to just do a pull request with the typo, or if, if you see an issue, you can, you can just open issue on GitHub here. Um, like something uh, doesn't work for you or something. You can just also put an issue here and I will respond to that. Okay, I think that's all. Um, I hope you enjoyed the course and if you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you.